Good day, everyone. <laughs> this is Enlightened Living's Truth and Oneness discussion. Today we're going to discuss a book, um, another audio book on the YouTube channel, Giving Voice to the Wisdom of the Ages. I believe that's what it's called. So, <clears throat> but um, yeah, so I hope everyone's doing good worldwide. <laughs> I think what's it, I think it's kind of important to like maybe just mention that yeah don't pay attention so much to what seems to be going on in the world um i guess like here's some things that are i feel like there's going to be some important information coming through to humanity that is truthful information but for the most part the same old like what's on the news and media yada 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 kind of train real wait what do you call it just like replaying stuff that's going yeah. on that's distracting and looks chaotic and whatever <laughs> don't pay so much attention to that kind of stuff you right yes um keep doing what we're doing absolutely enjoy do what the things you want to do and don't worry about what everyone else is doing so much <laughs> i think it's an important time for that right now right yes. everyone do you have any words on that uh, i just uh repeat what you're saying like don't worry about what seems to be falling apart or what's getting shaken up just do what you're doing make sure you stay positive don't like let a lot of the stuff take you down because they're trying to pull people back down so just pay no mind do what you got to do envision and the enjoy world yourself that you want. envision the world that you want to see and the life you want to have and live that and pay attention to that pretty much because this is the what is it this is the the thick of it this is where the manifestation starts really coming of the whole world and like the future of like you know existence and whatever on this earth plane this is where it's really happening like a lot's happening right now but not so much what's on tv it's more like what each individual what we're doing collectively um to manifest the future and manifest the right now really but yeah. also like paving the paving the way for the future i guess you could say so it's an important time but it's an important time to be in your peace <laughs> right and um living that and spreading that out to everyone yes. else pretty much yeah because uh we're having a good time yeah. and just that's kind of what it's about right now have a good time and you keep an ear out for what sort of happening in the world but for the most part don't connect yourself to all that <laughs> yeah absolutely okay so anything else no that sounds good so about this book why is this book important well i don't know if it's important i just thought it was really really interesting okay. so the book is called anna grandmother of jesus um i will put a link to it but i think that the book comes down off of the this youtube site it's an audio book so obviously you can search for it on, I'm sure, some book selling place and buy it if you wanted to. But it's a really interesting book. So obviously it's about Anna, Jesus' grandmother. <laughs> but I think one thing that I thought was really cool. So it's a, I don't even know how to like start. There's a lot of spoilers in this. So if you want it, the book to be more of a surprise, then don't listen to this video. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um I don't even know how to start this. Hmm, where should I start it? So it starts, some of the interesting parts about it were the correlations between this book and the book that I uh, read before, the the <clears throat> Masters of the Far East, kind of how they were ascended masters, basically. So Jesus' grandmother, Anna, is basically, she becomes an ascended master for the most part, you know, but so a lot of the there's a lot of correlations on like how um sort of the secret uh magic schools and like uh prolonging the life of the physical body and like doing a lot of work in the non-physical realms to change you know what's going on here on the earth plane um so that had a lot to do with all that but um any questions how do i that's on? it one of the things that's like pretty much right after you get done with the introduction of like who she becomes it's like pretty much goes right into like her journey on this and it's pretty interesting like i remember one of the things that was pretty interesting is like didn't you say like when you read it that 
she was able to like almost like meet all the children she was gonna have or something like that oh yeah on the upper realms and the non-physical realms so so yeah so she goes through there's a point in time where she is this girl named hannah where she has a event a catastrophic sort of event happened in her life so she's kind of in an unconscious state and then she ascends down sort of as the, this girl's higher consciousness and their consciousnesses merge and so she ascends into the body basically to become anna but this agreement was made between her and anna her and hannah mm-hmm. <laughs> on the upper realms so this was like a pre a pre-agreement that they made that when this event would happen in this girl's life then she would ascend down and their consciousness would merge and she'd become um anna so that happened when the girl was 16 around that age or whatever and so during her recovery time um anna is getting used to being a human in a body and on the earth plane and kind of like develop redeveloping her senses and everything i thought that was really interesting because she's talking about how like kind of when a baby comes into the body they have to redevelop their senses and kind of um um learn how to be on this dense earth plane and she says she was saying how any consciousness that comes into the body whether it's through birth or ascend down into the body i guess through the crown chakra or something (laughs) um (laughs) they still have to go through that rearranging process kind of gather your senses together and figure out you know how to work through this environment but i thought that was pretty interesting so that's kind of what happens at the beginning and then she goes through her life and she pretty much so she lives um about 600 years pretty much total but through her while her life she she um raises her one daughter and she goes to some place where she starts a i guess like a school or something and um she's a midwife and they do a lot of uh healing energy stuff and then she goes to egypt at one point and spends a couple hundred years there Mm -hmm. (laughs) learning um a lot of the mystery teachings of egypt and um yeah, it's just really interesting book to uh, to delve into because um, <clears throat> a lot of parallels with the other book. Like, the... well, there's that, and then also, oh, she another thing. She also makes it very uh, apparent too. She's or keeps bringing up that what she has been able to do, what she had been able to do in her life, physical life, anyone can do. So like um, the sort of the magic the magic or whatever mm. the prolonging or preserving the physical body um and then what was interesting with her um she was talking about so she actually went into more detail on how she how they went through the preservation processes of the body she was mentioning that like they would do first you have to unlearn you know the program that the body ages but um it would be she would do like a monthly like um purification process or something like that but also when she would go for longer periods of time kind of like when i um um i don't know if anyone know the samadhi when the um yogis go into samadhi and deep 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 meditation they pretty much leave their body and like let, let their body sit consciousness leaves the body and um through their higher consciousness leaves the body and then the body kind of just sits in like a deep state of meditation almost but um, she puts the body in that state and will, can, could leave it for longer periods of time. And then if she was going for even longer than that, which I'm assuming like 50 years or longer, because she would go like long periods of time up to like the higher realms to do work up there. She said that she would, um, these mystery schools are like secret teachings, like the brotherhood. I don't think anyone's heard of there. It's the brotherhood and the sisterhood. Mm. <laughs> And the, them together but like she was a part of all this stuff and like so there's these secret places that for those who were going to spend long times in like the astral or the higher realms where they would need to leave their body for a few hundred years or so <laughs> um they would go to leave them at these places and so there was a preparation process for the body kind of like what you would do with a mummy um and that actually brings up the whole Egyptian mummification thing, too. Because now it's like, oh, I know why they did all that stuff now. And, like, why we even find mummies. Because this was probably a regular practice. And then I think at some point, 
like what they did the preservation process of this decided they were not going to come back to their body i'm assuming i don't know but yeah they would basically wrap the body in like uh oils that would help preserve and nurture keep the skin nutri nutritious <laughs> um and then put the body into a what a sarcophagus mm -hmm. um and then she said and even if they were going for longer much longer periods of time they would um submerge the body in like a fluid that she said was very similar to amniotic fluid and and then when they would start to descend back down um the people that were watching over the bodies they would basically yeah they would help them out basically i don't even go into complete like super detail it was like so this book was so interesting you guys like i almost couldn't i keep saying reading uh, it was an audio bug so <laughs> i cheated a little bit <laughs> but it was so interesting um uh but yeah so that was like one of the processes for longer periods of time of having the body um being out of the body and when she'd come back basically there was a period of getting the body back used to being on the being physical again like she said mentioned it had to go a few weeks on liquid diet and that kind of stuff physical therapy and then she'd go back out to the world <laughs> and then at one point she was mentioning yeah it's like can you imagine like being around this large group of people who you're all of these people you're related to you're like the the ancestor of all of these people these are all your descendants and going away for you know a hundred years or so and coming back and having to explain yourself so you have to pretty much kind of like change your identity or like you know yeah cover for other, there was other people that did this too so she was like it had to cover for each other like fake deaths and like um, when people were ready to go away and then like when they were ready to come back you had to like kind of like cover for who their identity was because like people would ask questions if you're like oh hi i'm your great 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 grandparent but i look younger than you like <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> and so it, yeah so this is fascinating because it to me because you hear about this kind of stuff here and there like on movies or like i don't know wherever but then I don't know, I guess it just really sunk in, like, how real this actually is, this sort of thing it actually is, and was back then. It still is, because I think people either still do it or still have the ability to do something sort of like this, but, so that was really an interesting part of it. Yeah, it, <clears throat> it is pretty interesting, because, like, especially when you think about, like, you see this in multiple places where it's like okay there's preservation of the body you can take it with you you can leave it behind you can have it stay the same quote-unquote age for many many years like and this isn't something that's like okay this is the first time you've heard it like many people it's like if you think about it you've heard this numerous times like this is not like a new thing well well yeah well we've heard it like in movies and stuff yeah. like most people probably heard it at some point in like a movie mm -hmm. you know but yeah, just saying that it can happen, that it has happened in real life is what's, I don't know, still fascinating. But anyway, but yeah, and then so then she goes into also like, um, like babe birthing and like having a uh, light conceived babies, <laughs> which I think we should just read the book to kind of get into that. But basically, um, uh, babies conceived by the light. That's the whole Virgin Mary thing. That's right. Um, goes back to that. So I guess rather you believe in, I don't know, I guess it depends on where your religion sta stands at. If you are a Christian, a traditional Christian, and you believe all the traditional, like, teachings of the Bible and the church and whatever nowadays, this might be a hard one to swallow. <laughs> but if you're more open-minded and, like, have, you know, you've heard of, like, Jesus and all that stuff and Christianity and, um, this it, to me it was really believable the whole thing like i believe every word of it <laughs> the book but um so yeah that goes in the whole virgin mary thing so her daughter wait her daughter yes her daughter is mary <laughs> um who i believe was light conceived if i remember correctly but yeah so and so her daughter has a baby has jesus or yeshua his name is yeshua um through light conception but what's really interesting about this is that the plan for all this stuff was all the stuff that happened during the whole Jesus crucifixion, blah, 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 all that stuff. This was all planned out in great detail on a higher 
planes of existence. Like she'd go up there and meet her, all her children. Um, they were going to play parts in it, him, like everyone else. And they would plan out how they were going to do this. And the, there's a purpose behind all this too. Yeah. Um, That's pretty interesting when you think about it. Um, it's like, cause a lot of people seem to think it's like, Oh, you know, we don't, we're, where's our free will and all these other things. It's like, we have free will. Like, this is kind of like where it comes from. Like these kind of decisions we've kind of come to make before we even got here. It's like, that's why sometimes it seems like in life, you're like, why well, none of the other things I'm wanting to do ever work out. Some of the things I don't really want to have happen work out perfectly. It's like, it's cause it's something that you already kind of like set up in motion. Well, cause yeah. And, but the, the main, the interesting thing is that, so being on the physical plane, yes, yeah, you'll see would make the plans with everyone up there. And then when she was down here on the physical plane, she'd be like waiting. Okay, I know this is going to happen because we talked about it. It was just like the back and forth mm. being there and then back here, kind of like the anticipation of like, okay, now I know this is going to happen. And who do I need to meet to make all this stuff happen? Yeah. And like, and the purpose behind the whole crucifixion was like to show people to, it was basically to enlighten the world. And like, there's a, there's a bigger thing behind it that I think if people read the book, they would, um, get to read the book and hear all the extra details. Yeah. And nothing is really what you, what you think it is because I don't know, it's fed to you in a way that's not really the truth, unfortunately, but yeah. when you get to the truth of why things are the way they are, then you, you understand it on a much deeper level but um read the book everybody or at least check if you out. want to yeah but there's like one other thing i wanted to bring up though let's see i can try to remember it <laughs> hold on yeah it's like it's just interesting because it's like um i kind of get these feelings every now and again also where you're like ah, i feel like something's supposed to be happening it's like because uh, we don't really remember to the extent of like how um Anna or Hannah or whatever uh, remembers or like the back and forth of the information like what's going to happen but inside of me at least sometimes so I know other people as well like you're like so I feel like something's going to happen something's going to change so something's going to do something I'm going to am I going to meet someone am I like you you kind of like almost sense some of your your events that you you planned out before too because you have like this underlying like hey something's going to happen feeling but we just don't know exactly what like what the plan was. Yeah. Well, I will end it here because uh, we have a baby waking up. <laughs> Maybe we'll try to finish some more of this or do the video over again. I don't know. We'll see. But okay. hopefully, um, yeah, people can go read it if they want to. Uh, Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit more in another video. We'll yeah. see. All right, everybody.